Lesson 4-4 four, four is partial fractions. In this section, uh, we're going to be given a fraction, so like this one that they're, give, that they're giving us here, and we're going to be able to break it down into what actually added up to it. Um, so, there's this is with systems of equations because there is some examples that are going to have systems. Um, I'm going to show you a different way that doesn't really use systems as much, and I think it's going to be a little bit easier. Um, but some problems you have to use kind of a system of equations. So um, there's quite a few examples, so please watch all the way through this. Um, it is going to be a longer video, so like I said, make sure you watch all the way through so you get every different example that we have. <coughs> so the first one... Um, is going to be the simplest here for us. So if we follow these four steps, uh, so we're going to factor our denominator, let A and B stand for the numerators in our fractions, we, we're going to multiply both sides by our least common denominator, and then we're going to solve. So if I factor this, which hopefully we can all factor, so I get x plus 4 and x plus 2. So our fraction is going to be set equal to two different fractions. And the two different fractions are gonna have what we just factored as their denominator. Does not matter which order you write them in. If you want x plus two first and then x plus four, doesn't matter. Um, and then like it says in step two, let a and b be your numerators. All right? <coughs> so when we do this, uh, we are gonna multiply by our least common denominator, which is what we just factored. All right. Um, so when we do that, we're going to actually multiply all three fractions by that. So if we multiply the way left fraction, that's really our denominator times our denominator. So that's going to cancel and you get just x plus 8. When you multiply by the fraction with the a in it, the x plus 4s are going to cancel and you really get a and then just x plus 2 left. And when you multiply b by the b fraction, the x plus 2 is going to cancel. So you just get b and the x plus 4 left. All right. So every time that you do this, one of your factors is going to cancel out. And you should be able to just write what's left um, times the a or times the b. All right. And every time that you do this, your numerator, sorry, your denominator on the left side, so what it actually equals, is just going to cancel out because you factored it. So you're multiplying by the exact same thing, really. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is solve for a and b. So you may see this if you find a different video or something where they actually solve this with a system of equations. I'm going to teach you a little bit different. I like, and I think it's easier, I like to just think about subbing in numbers into our x values that make this full parenthesis 0, and then we'll do it again, making this parenthesis 0. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sub in negative 2 in for all of our x's. All right. So if I do that, so x equals negative 2, then I get... Oops, not 8, sorry, I get 6 equals, that'll be a times 0, and that'll be b times 2. So we sub in negative 2 because that makes that first parenthesis equal 0. So we want one of our parentheses to equal 0. So figure out what x value is going to be to make that equal 0, and then you should be able to solve. So that will cancel, and I get 6 equals 2b. So b equals 3. So the other uh, parenthesis, I need x to equal negative 4. So I'm going to sub in negative 4 into all of those. And I'll get 4 equals a times negative 2 plus b times 0. Again, we want that to happen. So that will just be a 0. So I get 4 equals negative 2a which means a has to be negative 2. <clears throat> so make sure in your final answer that you write it in the right spot. 
So a is negative 2, and notice that was above your x plus 4 in your original equation. And b is 3, and that was above your x plus 2 in your original. So if you had x plus 2 first and then x plus 4, you're still going to get 3 being above your x plus 2 and negative 2 being above your x plus 4. You just solve for a and b, which they would be 3 and then negative 2 instead of negative 2 and 3. All right? So the order doesn't matter, but make sure you plug them back into your final answer correctly. So another one here, um, so we're going to factor our denominator still. So in this case, I can actually take out a greatest common factor first, and then I can factor it again. So, um, this we can actually write as x minus 1 squared. So that is actually our least common denominator. So we'll have 3x squared oops, minus oops, 2x, not 2x, sorry. And now, since we really have three different denominators, so we have an x, we have an x minus 1, and we have another x minus 1, we're going to have three different fractions. So we're going to have a over x plus b over x minus 1. So this is a little bit confusing part here. Um, but since this is x minus 1 squared, we actually need to write x minus 1 squared. So we have two x minus 1s. We have to write it squared. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it works out like that, but it does. Um, so please just do it. Um, and like I said, I, I'm not exactly sure why you need an x minus 1 and an x minus 1 squared or why it works out, but it does work out. All right. So what we're going to actually multiply by is oops, our denominator again that we just factored. So when you do this, you need to have a denominator for each power of the factor. So like this is x to the x minus 1 to the first, x minus 1 to the second. If by chance you had an x minus 1 cubed in your denominator, you'd have an x minus 1 cubed as another factor, as another denominator. All right. So when we multiply through there, again, the denominator over here is going to cancel. In the a fraction, the x is going to cancel, so you're really going to just get x minus 1 squared left. In the b fraction, just one of the x minus 1s will cancel, so you actually get an x left and another x minus 1 left. And then in the c fraction, you're going to have the x minus 1 cancel, so you just get an x left. All right. <coughs> so... Um, we're going to basically do the same thing as before. So we're still looking at what can make our parentheses equal zero. So this one's the easiest because x equals zero will make my c go away. But if I sub in zero other places, hopefully you see that this right here would be negative one times my zero. So that's actually going to be zero as well. All right. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone, which is great, because then we can actually solve for our a value. So if x equals 0, I'm just going to get 5 on the left side, because x squared is 0 and then minus 0, so I just get 5. And then I'm going to get a negative 1 squared plus b times 0, really, plus c times 0. All right? So, um, negative 1 squared is 1, so you really just get 5 equals your A. Okay, so that's one of them. Now, if I look at my other parentheses, if I sub a 1 in, because then that will make my A parenthesis equal 0, so let's go X equals 1. So in this case, I would have 3 minus 1 plus 5 on the left side. My A would be times 0. And actually, if you notice your B 
1 minus 1 would be 0, so you're still going to get 0 there as well, and you really just get C. So that'll be 0, that'll be 0. 3 minus 1 plus 5 gives me 7 equals my C. So now I have those two that I'm done with. I, uh, I've got my A and my C solved for, so we need to solve for our B. So this is where you might see a system of equations. Um, but again, I'm trying to teach you a little bit easier what I think is easier anyways. So in this case, we already have A and C solved for. We don't know our B, but we can actually figure it out um, by subbing in another X value. So you can sub in any X value besides 0 and 1 because we already subbed those in. But any other X value and your A and your C and you'll be able to solve for your b. So let's just say x equals 2, because that would be the next integer that we have. So if you sub x equals 2 everywhere, and you sub your a in, and you sub your c in, you should be able to solve for b, because b is the only variable we have left. So on the left side, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, minus 2 is 10, plus 5 would give you 15. And then 2 minus 1 squared, so 2 minus 1 is 1 squared, is 1 times 5, so you get 5. With the b, 2 minus 1 is 1 times 2 is 2, so you get 2b. And then 7 times 2 would be 14. Okay, so just a bunch of algebra steps, really. Um, if you subtract your 5 over, you get 10. If you subtract 14 over, you really get a negative 4 equals 2b. And divide by your 2, and b will equal negative 2. So again, make sure you put these in the correct fractions. So my a is 5, and that's over my x. My b, oops, sorry. My b is negative 2, and that's over my x minus 1. And my c is 7, and that's over my x minus 1 squared.